So you don't want to freeze it before. Yeah, it's for cooking or freezing. So this bird from right now, what's today, Sunday at 11 a.m., needs to be in a refrigerator until Tuesday at 11 a.m. At that point, you could freeze or you could eat. Yeah. And, and probably 24 hours is enough. I always just tell people more just to be on the safe side, but, you know, you could experiment with it. Um, so the way this is going to work, guys, for the, the rest of this, to, for you to do your own bird, is that um, we have more of these blue aprons. I believe there's six, so it would be nice to do groups of six. So when it's your turn for the group of six, you're going to start with your apron on down at the kill station and come all the way through the process, and then you're going to hand off your apron to the next group of six. And if you're waiting to process your bird, meaning you're not in the blue apron and doing the work. Um, there's some labeling stuff that is going to go over with you. Um, we can talk a little bit about composting, some of these other stations, some of the other little parts of the process. So um, that's the deal. And like I said on the killing, if you don't want to do it, don't have to. So, yeah. yeah, so um, I'm thinking most people got a pretty good view of what happened up here. But if you were on the outskirts, why don't you watch Susan? on this next bird and then let's have six people who got a really good view head down with head down with Ken to the killing zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're ready to jump in and that way if you want to watch again. Point out one of the best practices that's recommended is that you have a dirty area and a clean area, right? So that's why you have the straw down underneath the killing area. And that's also why you don't want pets or chickens or anything going back and forth. So today we weren't able to contain the chickens. That's why they're here. But yeah. best practice. But we just put the dogs away. Yeah. <laughs> and then the <laughs> flies and insects and other stuff. You want to have vector control to not have that back and forth. Yeah. So. So what happened to our our kill nitro? Behind you. Oh. So <laughs> so um, six folks are ready to go kill with you, and right. I'm gonna sh do this again for folks that want to see it again. Right. So. Don't the killer. He's and you know, on our farm, he's the <laughs> one that does it. So sometimes you just have to well, do with what you're comfortable with. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna pinch the skin again, and I'm going in. This is a bigger bird, and I'm just trying not to poke my knife down into those intestines. Once I get through, I use that to hold a little tension on the skin. I'm coming down around the vent in a large keyhole shape. And I'm trying to get under that vent, but not poke through that intestine that's on the other side. And this is one of those things, guys, you just have to do it and feel what it feels like to, to see what we're getting at here. And you will. Um, so it looks like my vent is loose on here. I'm going to cut up a little more so I have a little bit more room to work in here. And now I'm going to get in here with my hand and start breaking some of those connective tissues around the outside of the bird, just loosening things up in there so I can tease out the intestines without worrying about breaking them. And this bird has a much norm more normal looking gizzard, which is great. There's those intestines. This bird has a little bit more full intestines, too, maybe with a better forager. Well, we'll see. Never cut your I, do I cut my fingers on anything inside? Yeah. No, never. I've never had that. The only this is the the way people get injured. Do you want any bones that are sharp enough? No, because remember you haven't cut anything inside the bird, so it should just be the way the bird, you know, was. There's bones that come right here, right there, and if you make a really weird cut on the back, you might expose those. But the way we do it, I've never had those those come out. Okay, so looks like we're doing pretty good, pretty loose, and we can see the gizzard. Here's the gizzard. Still kind of small, but that nice, muscly pouch. That's a good handhold. Okay, so I'm gonna grab on with one hand, my other hand on top of the bird. Slow, steady pressure. Ah, oh, I didn't break the liver this time. Okay, so I got the liver. Yay. Looks like I'm still missing part of. Looks like it broke in the same spot, right above the gizzard. <laughs> So now my first thing I want to do is get this intestinal tract out of here. This is our contaminants, our poop. I want that gone. So now it's separated from the bird. For me, this is going right into my pig bucket. You may choose to keep it. Now we are keeping livers, but this is going to go in the compost. That's how you separate that bile. Yeah, we didn't have to do this on the first one because it came off naturally. But what I like to do is not use a knife. Um, I always break it with a knife, and then I've got bile everywhere. So I pinch as high up as I can, even erring on this side of pinching off a little bit of the liver itself, 
and I just kind of tease it off there, get rid of that as soon as possible. And there's a little green on there, but I think we're okay. It'd be nice to give this thing a good rinse if you don't pinch it exactly where you want it. Okay, so that looks like a pretty nice liver. It's a good way to check on the health of your birds, too, by looking at the liver. If you see a lot of spots on here and weird colors, that bird had some sort of an issue, you know, some sort of processing thing. It's going to go into our gut you, bucket. You, at what point do you just say a bird shouldn't eat it? I mean, um, use your senses. I mean, sometimes when, right when they come out of the plucker, you'll be like, that bird, something's really wrong with it. Like, it's skinny, the skin is a fun, funny color, um, it's got, like, really pussy joints or something, you know, like, there'll be, there'll be some weird things that you're going to get, and, and go by your first gut instinct, like, that doesn't look like I'd want to eat it, and, and get rid of it, you know? Do you compost it then, or? Yeah, it goes in the compost with everything else. So I'm going to try to get out the rest of the stomach here. Remember, we're still missing part of the stomach. And it can get a little slippery. And I broke it again. So this is the kind of stuff that happens. That's going out of there. How often do you get it all on board? Half the time. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just pulling from the other end. I grabbed the esophagus. Got part of it there. Our, my crop is still in here. This is definitely, you know, a part you want to get out, and sometimes it's hard. There's the crop, that pouch. So it came out in three pieces this time. That's how it goes. Okay, so we've got the crop. We've still got the heart in here. And remember, the heart is connected to the um, trachea and the lungs. You know, that's their circulatory system. So sometimes it takes removing the trachea on its own. I'm just trying to get the lungs. Now, the lungs, I didn't explain this the first time, but the lungs are set in the bird's back like really down in there. It's not a part, it's just floating around you can grab. So I try to find the ribs of the chicken and they, I try to take three fingers and find three rib bones and slide my fingers along those rib bones because that's where the lung is and you can't usually just pop it out. But I kind of mangled that one. <laughs> well, no, I didn't. There's three lobes on there. Let's see if I can do a better job on this side. Nope. Well, I got the lungs out. And if you want to, let me rinse this bird so you can see, a good way to get, wrap your brain around removing the lungs is to look at it where the lungs were, and then it gives you an idea of where to grab when you're going into a whole bird. The blood on the skin um, is not as bad as poop on the skin, but it does stain the bird a little bit after a while. I would just make it a habit if you have blood to rinse, especially if you have a manure. But Okay. So we're doing pretty good. I still have testicles in this bird, but I can see they look like the white kidney bean shaped thing inside the bird. Keep in mind your hands and your tools too. Sometimes your tools may have a little manure harbored on there. And that's also all with the hand washing stations can be for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if, you get, if you have a poop explosion, you don't want to use that. And you're touching the handles of things and the hoses, right? Mm -hmm. So you be conscious of that process. Okay, so I'm going to take the testicles out, and then if you'd like to take a look inside this first cavity so you can see where those lungs were. These are some small ones. So, can you see? Hold on, a little water. That's making it hard to see.